A state trooper lunges after a suicidal bridge jumper, saving the mother of two in the nick of time. The clear, sunny morning could easily have been her last. It was just hold on to that arm, don't let it go. July 19th, 2004, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Trooper Les Bolt hears about a frantic husband calling 911. The man is following his wife, who he thinks is suicidal. There's a suicidal female subject. Husband is on the line with us. But the call for help won't be easy to answer. Before law enforcement can do anything to help her, they will have to catch up to her. She's traveling in excess of 90 miles an hour. There's always a little bit of delay from the time that the dispatcher gets the call and then they can relay it out to the cars on the road. Also on the lookout for the suicidal driver is Sergeant Bill Morgan of the Brown County Sheriff's Department. We knew we were looking for a white Oldsmobile and that the husband was following in a Dodge Durango. So I set up cars on the Highway 29 hoping we could intercept her. Even with multiple officers on the road, Bolt believes the chances of catching up with the desperate woman are slim. But luck is on his side. After just a few minutes, Bolt thinks he spots the white Oldsmobile. I was kind of actually surprised that, you know, there's a vehicle in front of me. I didn't know for sure if it was her, but the car was moving at a high rate of speed, passing other traffic. We're going to be the one. It's on 543. the on Trooper Bolt flicks on his lights and chases after the driver, whose speed reaches 120 miles per hour. Other drivers move out of the way of those two speeding cars. Passed a couple vehicles on the ramp, and then I was finally able to catch up to it on I-43, where it proceeded you know, at high speeds up onto the top of the bridge. The driver heads onto Tower Drive Bridge, rising 130 feet above the Fox River. In the middle of the bridge, she pulls over. Bolt has an uneasy feeling. I didn't know what you know her thoughts were being possible suicidal subject. I didn't know what she would might have in her hands or what she'd be doing. The driver immediately exits the car. She turned away from me like I wasn't even there and headed towards the side of the bridge. Uh, I was already out of my vehicle, so I made the decision to try and cut her off before she got to the edge. But before Bolt can reach the woman, she jumps. I couldn't see either of them, and I looked over and I saw Les was looking over the side of the bridge, I thought. I radioed our dispatch center and I said, I think she jumped. But then a miracle unfolds. No, I told not to board. Next thing I look over and I see Les pulling an arm up. I could see he had a hold of her hand. So I yelled into the mic, he's got a hand. The woman's fall is broken by a beam that runs along the outer edge of the bridge. It gives Trooper Bolt one last chance to grab onto her and save her life. I was able to get a hold of her arm, keep her there and then just wait. There's, there's, there's no way I was getting her over the wall by myself. I wasn't going to try and readjust the grip. Together with a third officer, Deputy Kevin Kennard, Les Bolt, and Sergeant Bill Morgan are able to pull the woman to safety. She was what I've always called the giving us the thousand yard stare. And to me, that's where someone doesn't see anything going on around them. They're just looking a thousand yards away. The suicidal woman is Tina Zahn, who's experiencing postpartum depression after the birth of her second child. I remember just being in the house and just feeling numb. It was just numb. And the statistics show that postpartum depression uh, it reaches its height 90 days after the birth of a baby. And it, we almost hit it to the day. We were like three days off. Tina's depression is so deep, her husband had asked Tina's mother to help look after her. Apparently I was talking about jumping. I don't remember talking about jumping. Apparently they were trying to keep the car keys away from me. According to Tina, on that July morning, her mother lost patience with her for not being able to get over her depression. It was too much for Tina to handle. I snapped and I lost all hope and I saw the car keys laying over by the refrigerator on the counter. I grabbed them, I ran out the door. But before Tina drives away, her six-year-old daughter pleads with her. Um, she came out of the house and she saw me in the car and she's banging on my window. 
And she's banging on the door saying, Mommy, Mommy, take me with you, take me with you. And I, I still, I backed out. I just took the car and I just went as fast as I could. Her mother alerts Tina's husband. His distraught wife has taken off in the car. Tina's determined to drive to the bridge, get out and jump. She says she can't recall much of that harrowing journey. The next memory I have is being on Highway 29 coming into Green Bay. And I see my husband and he's... Uh, coming at me and I, I do see him go through the grassy median. Tina is so filled with despair she keeps driving despite the lights and sirens completely focused on getting to the bridge. I remember pulling up and pulling over to the side of the bridge and that's it. The efforts of Green Bay law enforcement stopped Tina from taking her own life. God reached out of the heavens. and kind of said, it's not your time yet. Sorry. <laughs> if Trooper Bolt had been one step slower, Tina says her life would have been over. His whole body is over and he just is hanging out with one leg by the barrier and the other leg goes up in the air. So, you know, microseconds. The call was very, very close. I mean, split second anywhere and uh, she would have, you know, succeeded in what she was trying to do. Tina has written a book called Why I Jumped to help others struggling with depression and she speaks publicly about her ordeal. I wasn't even thinking of my children. I, I just was thinking there's no hope. What began on a desperate morning has grown into a supportive friendship for Tina and the officers at the bridge. I've got to meet her children, her husband, and this was probably one of the most positive days of my whole career.